you all sang that like you enjoyed it. Amen. Amen. Now, if I can, can I get y'all to come down so I can preach to y'all? Um, and not that I'm not going to preach to preach to you all, but um, it helps to have that uh, call and response from that way, working back and forth. Amen. And uh, I promise you'll be safe, those of you out there. Um, thank God for our uh, praise team, brother and brother McDonald, and um, and uh, Trusty Nemo, and uh, brother Deontay, and and Jonathan, and. Shaq and Lewis on NAV, we thank you so much. Let's go to Mark chapter 10, the Gospel of Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, and uh, we'll be reading from verses 46 through 52, and I'll be reading that in the King James Version. Mark chapter 10. Uh, verses 46 through 52 and you if you will stand with us for the reading of the word those of you who were watching at home um, if you have the strength will you stand with us for the reading of the word what that does is that gets some blood flowing just in case you've been seated the whole time enjoying this worship experience um, and verse 46 uh, reads um, and they came to Jericho and as they went out of Jericho with his disciples, and we see it on the screen up here, a great number of people, uh, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And you notice that wasn't just any ordinary cry, was it? Mm. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. What did the people tell him to do, everybody? Be quiet. Shut it up. Stop talking in the movie theater. Jesus is coming by. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And you can see this blind man crying out in desperation. And Jesus did what, church? He stood still and commanded him to be called. And, and, they called the, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. Jesus is calling you. And he, meaning Bartimaeus, casting away his garment, uh, his outer garment, he rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Come on, uh, is, is the computer working slowly back there? Come on. There we go. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? In other words, what can Jesus do for you? What do you want me to do? The blind man said uh, unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Lord, I want to see. And you know, this is Bartimaeus' second request. Many people, when they preach and teach about this, they only see and they only teach about the fact that Bartimaeus asked for his sight. But his first request was for what? Mercy. He said, have mercy on me. That's the greatest request. That's his greatest request. And then he said, I want to see. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy what? Faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Mm. 
for just a few minutes, we want to preach and teach, more teaching than preaching on the topic, what's in a name? What's in a name? Uh, will you pray with me and for me? Heavenly Father, it's once more and again that I stand behind, behind this sacred desk. And Lord, as I stand here, God, I pray that I would decrease, that you might increase. I pray, Lord, that uh, your people would see uh, none of me but all of you. And I pray they will, will, would hear none of me but all of you, God. And, and Lord, as you speak through me, God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, God. And Lord, we pray that the end result of this time of worship and word is that one, somebody will draw closer to you and two, maybe, just maybe, somebody will come asking, what must I do to be saved? Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. What in a name, you may be seated. What in a name? I need to take you back to your ninth grade year of high school. I'm gonna pause like Millie Jackson did because I know some of you have to think back further than others. Uh -huh. Let me take you back to your ninth grade year. Let's go to your ninth grade English class. Uh, upstairs, take a left, go through the doors, down the hall, no, first classroom on the right. All right, your ninth grade English class. How many of you remember the name of your ninth grade English teacher in here? Uh, Dr. Romero, who's your ninth grade English teacher? Mrs. Whitehead, Mrs. Whitehead. Deontay. Mr. Thomas, Jonathan, did you raise your hand? Do you remember your ninth grade English teacher? I'm praying for your teacher. <laughs> your ninth grade English teacher, Valika. Miss Langford. Uh, Sister Whitehead, right? No, tell me your name. Sister Teresa, what, who's your ninth grade English teacher? Oh, you don't remember? Ninth grade. Mr. Madunio. Wow, I bet y'all had some fun with that name. Uh, Jared. Mrs. Mrs. Huh? Mrs. Wilson, Bayside. Mrs. Wilson, Bayside High School, Deaconess Cooper. She doesn't remember. Sister Perez. Ms. Warwick. Ms. Warwick. Brother McDonald. Yeah. Uh, Trustee Nemo. Ms. Who? Malcolm. Malcolm, Ms. Malcolm, okay, all right. Yeah, taking you back to ninth grade uh, English. And now, it was or should have been your ninth grade teacher, English teacher, uh, who taught you something about a, a young man named Romeo Montague and a young lady named Juliet Capulet. Uh, and you, for those of us who remember, Romeo and Juliet is a Shakespearean play about two star-crossed lovers. And they were star-crossed. Star-crossed means their stars crossed. They, they didn't align. They were never meant to be. And the only reason that they were never meant to be is that their families were at war. Uh, kind of like the Hatfields and the McCoys. And if you were, if you were a Montague, I don't care if I didn't know you. If I was a Capulet, I didn't like you. It's like, uh, my name is John Montague. Oh, okay, well, I'm a Capulet. I don't know you, but I don't like you. What's in a name? And so the Montagues and the Capulets were at war, and, 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 and it just so happens that their kids fell in love. 
Well, in Act 2, scene 3, that, that, that's the famous balcony scene that you see portrayed so much on TV and in, in comedy shows and in cartoons, that balcony scene. Romeo is below in the garden and, and Juliet is up in the balcony. Romeo sees Juliet, but Juliet doesn't see Romeo and uh, because Romeo is hidden, he doesn't know whether to let Juliet know that he really loves her and plus he's in enemy territory so he has to be very quiet and Juliet is in the balcony and she is speaking aloud and then Juliet says and you remember this 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 battle between the Montagues and the Capulets she says tis, the, tis but thy name that is my enemy she and again she is she's a, talking aloud but she doesn't know Romeo is there and then she says thou art thyself though not a Montague she said what is Montague it is neither hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, and watch Julia as a ratchet little girl or any other part belonging to a man. Uh -huh. And then Julia says, that which we call a rose by any other word would smell as sweet. And then she says, so Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection he owes. And she said, he owes, but it means he owns without that title. In other words, she said, Romeo would be fine if he were called something other than Romeo. That boy would be fine if he were called Josh Jenkins or Hakeem Abdullah or, or Harry Smith or Jaquan Johnson and then she says Romeo doff thy name cast off your name and she says and in exchange for your name for thy name which is none of thee she said take all of me yes what's in a name and uh, Juliet is saying that a name is not important and that, that Romeo would still be Romeo if he were not called Romeo. And that may be the case with us. We would still be who we are if we were named or called something different. Am I right about it? But this was not the case for Jesus. Jesus's names and his monikers, M-O-N-I-K-E-R-S, and his titles and the titles associated with Jesus defines who he is to God, they define who he is to the world, and they define who he is to us. Are you with me? Uh, and I submit to you today that the names and the monikers that uh, uh, blind, blind Bartimaeus uses to refer to Jesus signified who he believed that Jesus was. Are you with me? And I believe that this is what brought about his healing. What's in a name? So let's put the text into context. Can we do that? And we know we, we, we've got to feed the Bible scholars to put the text into context. At the beginning of Mark chapter 10, Jesus is ministering on the coasts of Judea by the farther side of the Jordan. And then he passes, he comes to Jericho, and then he goes out of Jericho. The Bible doesn't mention what he did in Jericho. Mark said he comes to Jericho, and then he goes out. And on the other side of town, there is a blind man by the name of Bartimaeus who is sitting beside the road begging. Of course, being blind, Bartimaeus' other senses are heightened. And Mark writes that Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. Uh, now, because this took place near the end of Jesus' three and a half years of ministry on earth, uh, he had performed a lot, a lot of miracles. And when I say a lot of miracles, a lot of miracles. And correct me if I'm wrong, but word tends to get around when you start performing miracles. Am I right about it? Mm. Bartimaeus pro had probably heard that Jesus had turned water into wine at the marriage ceremony in Cana. 
Bartimaeus had probably heard that Jesus had healed a young man who was demon possessed and he probably heard of, that he healed a young woman who was, de was demon possessed. Bartimaeus probably heard and news had probably traveled to, to Jericho about Jesus healing the withered man's hand during the church service in the temple. You remember that. The man came to Jesus with his hand withered and Jesus said stretch out your hand and it's like okay Jesus and, and I would have been thinking this Jesus my hand is withered if I could stretch out my hand I would stretch out my hand but Jesus says stretch out your hand and he stretched out his hand Bartimaeus had probably heard about these miracles and then Bartimaeus began to call out to Jesus I imagined it was a desperate call wouldn't your call to Jesus be desperate if this were your only chance to get what you were bereft of, that thing of which you were bereft or missing? Wouldn't your call to Jesus be desperate if you had one shot to get that thing that you have desired for whatever season or time in your life? Let's bring it to uh, 2021 or let's bring it in real time. Has, have you ever called out, called out to Jesus and your call has been desperate because you didn't know how you were going to fix the problem. You didn't know how you were going to solve the problem and you know that we are used to at least trying to fix the problem and make things right. Am I right about it? And when you reach the, the dead end and you had done all you could do you had tapped out all of your resources. You had called everybody you could call. You had spent all the money you could spend. You had asked anybody and everybody to help solve the problem and you had done all you could do. When you got to that brick wall, there was nothing left for you to do but do like Bartimaeus and go Jesus that kind of desperate cry Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus and I submit to you church that it was not how Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus that facilitated his healing. It was what he called Jesus that brought about his healing. Because what Bartimaeus called Jesus in his uh, mouth was an indication of who Bartimaeus believed Jesus was in his heart. Let me say that one more time. Uh, what Bartimaeus called Jesus from his mouth was a direct, substantial, and clear indication of who he believed Jesus was in his heart. Pastor, I've heard something like that before. Romans 10 and 10 said, For with the heart man confesseth, confesseth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For with the heart man believes I'm sorry, unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That means I'm telling you with my mouth what I believe in my, in my heart. So for just for a few minutes today, we want to look at three of the monikers or the names that, G, that, that Bartimaeus called Jesus and how these were significant. Uh, do you have about 17 minutes? Those of you at home, do you have about 17 minutes? All right, amen. I didn't even put a sermon close on this because we're we, we going to go the way God says. Point one, Bartimaeus called, called him Jesus first. Look at verse 47. Verse 47 uh, reads, And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, What's that, first, what's that word next? What's the next word? Oh, y'all not, I'm going to wait for y'all to get back to verse 47. I'm not messing with y'all. I know y'all had the answer, but they had not had the answer. Verse 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, that's the one I want, Jesus. The first thing he called Jesus was Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He called him Jesus. Well, why is this significant? Pastor, that's his name. What else would you call Jesus? Yeah, but there's some significance in what he calls Jesus first. The name Jesus is derived from the Hebrew name Yeshua, which means to deliver, to, de to rescue, or to save. It's the same as the name Joshua in the Old Testament. And it is given to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because according to Matthew 1.21, he saves his people from their sins. And it's important, church, that uh, Bartimaeus calls Jesus by his name. This signifies that Bartimaeus believes that Jesus is the Savior. If I believe that Jesus is the Savior, then I believe that Jesus saves. If I believe that Jesus is the Savior, I believe that Jesus can save, will save, has the power to save, and is anointed to save. He called him Jesus first. One of my hard and fast rules uh, as an individual is um, I very rarely call other people mom and dad. And, um, and, and I do this, and I stay away from this, rather, because I have a mother and I have a father. And they did their jobs, and they are doing their jobs. So my thing is that I'm not going to disrespect my mother and father by calling somebody that I barely know mom and dad. I call my father father because there are things that go along with that title, father and daddy. And okay, I'm going to go ahead and do what I do in the country. He's not dad. He's not father. He is my daddy. There are things that come along with that title. And for 52 years, he has shown himself to be my daddy. Are you with me? My mother. I cannot just call people mother willy-nilly. For 52 years, my mother has shown up and she has shown herself to be worthy of the title mama. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go country mama. And I'm not giving anybody else the title, anybody else the belt. It's not not just a cursory title to me it means something and so when Bartimaeus called Jesus Jesus first he was saying that I've heard the reports about you and I believe you are the Savior I've heard the reports about you and I need some saving right now and I believe I trust I know that you are the person to do what I need can I get an amen he called him Jesus first he called him Jesus first. And you think about it, and I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to point two. I know I got like 12 and a half more minutes. When you are mad at a person, do you always call them by their God-given names, by the name that their mama and daddy gave them when you are mad at them? Oh, oh, okay. When I'm mad at Velika, uh, I may not go, oh, I'm mad at that Velika. I may call her a heifer in my mind. In my mouth, I, I'm going to respect my wife. You know what I'm saying? In my mind. But again, people call you what they believe you are. It was important that he called Jesus, Jesus first. That's the first thing that comes out of his mouth. Amen? What's in a name? Let's go to point two. Uh, the second moniker that Bartimaeus attaches to the person of Jesus is Son of David. And Bartimaeus uses this title or moniker, actually he uses it two times. First in verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. 
And then verse 48, and many told him that he should hold his peace. Shut it up, Bartimaeus. We, can't you see we're trying to see Jesus? And But he cried the more. He was like, mm -mm, I don't care what you're saying. You got sight. I'm, I'm, I, I'm blind and this is my only chance. He called out the more uh, a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, why is this significant, Bible scholars? I know this is not for your emotions, but I'm gonna need you to turn your brain on, okay? Because you know, in our churches, we turn our, our emotions a whole lot, and a whole lot of people don't know nothing about God. They just know this right here. <clears throat> Amen. And so let's turn our brains on this morning. Amen. Because if you engage your brain, what you know about God will increase, and that will increase the reason that you have to shout. Amen. Here we go, son of David. Son of David was Jesus' messianic title. The term Messiah means the same thing as Christ, anointed one. So when you're calling Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ ain't his last name. Christ is a moniker. Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus, Christ, Jesus anointed, Christ Jesus, anointed Savior, Savior anointed, anointed Savior. Christ means anointed one, Messiah means anointed or anointed one. And evidently, uh, Bartimaeus knew this because he had been to some Bible studies. I'm looking at you too, those of you at home who never come to Bible study. Mm-hmm. He had attended some Bible studies because according to biblical prophecy, a descendant of David would rule forever in righteousness. Jesus was connected to David on his mother's side uh, by blood and on his father's side by adoption. And what Bartimaeus, was, what Bartimaeus was saying is that I believe you are who I've heard that you are. I believe the prophecy. Going back to Como, North Carolina. Uh, when I was young uh, and growing up in a small town in the country, again, Como doesn't have any stoplights, um, doesn't even have any caution lights that I know of, just country roads. Uh, when I was young, I was not known by the name Perez. I was known by the moniker or title Russell and Cleo Gatlin's son. Anybody of you, of you, any of you ever been identified that way, especially when you were young? And there's some people now that you're older who still identify you. They can't think of your name. They can't think of Clarissa. Uh, all they think of is um, Reverend Kelly and, 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 and First Lady Kelly's daughter. You know her. Oh, yeah, Reverend Kelly's daughter. And so and you referred to by your name. And, and your parents' name, rather, and my mother and father had a pretty good name in the town. My mother was a teacher and a small town, so she taught almost every kid who came through the eighth grade. Uh, my mother did the announcements at church. My father was a singer, and uh, he sang in most of the choirs in my church and uh, the church where I grew up. And he also had a singing group that traveled around in the area to Sunday afternoon singing. Anybody ever, anybody remember Sunday afternoon singings? Look at you bring that towel. I don't have a towel. Sunday afternoon singings. And so I sat in many a Sunday afternoon singings where you didn't do three songs, you did a theme and two selections. Sunday, you know I know about Sunday afternoon singings. So my mother and father were known in the community. And, uh, and so what I did was identified with them. Russell and Cle that's Russell and Cleo Gatling's son. That's why it was important to me for me to be especially sneaky about the things that I did that weren't right. Because it, it wouldn't have been just me I was bringing down. I would have been, I would have sullied the names of my parents. And so, uh, so, uh, Pastor, why do you tell us this? Well, there was prophecy about Jesus' lineage. He was born of a virgin, and 
then uh, not just was he born of a virgin, uh, he was the carpenter's son on this side. And then the lineage says he came down 40 and two generations. And, and in the beginning of which gospel, either Matthew or Mark, they trace Jesus' lineage. Well, the, uh, uh, Bartimaeus called him son of David, which means Bartimaeus believed in his heart that the prophecy about Jesus was true. Bartimaeus believed that Jesus was who he said he was. Bartimaeus believed that Jesus was not only the Savior, but that Jesus was the son of David. I don't just believe you are who you say you are. I believe the prophecy that surrounds you. Not only do I believe the prophecy that surrounds you, I believe the word that says the word. Because again, that the, the, the ministry of Jesus, there are books written, uh, uh, books written about him, and there are books written uh, from other people's perspective, and we are called to believe the word. Hmm. What? How do you know about Jesus? How do you know about him? Somebody? The word. The word. And if you don't believe the word, what are you believing in? If you don't study the word, who are you believing in? So Bartimaeus not only believed that Jesus was the Savior, he believed the word that surrounded Jesus' appearance. What's in a name? Then the last one, and I'm done. Thank you for, with, for, for, for staying up for this teaching. Bartimaeus called Jesus, not just rabbi, um, and I looked it up on YouTube yesterday, it was Rabboni, that real throaty kind of inflection, and we here in the country will say Rabboni. Uh, verse 47, let's go to verse 47. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried out more, uh, the more, a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 49, and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he cast his garment, uh, cast away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And 51 says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, right there. That word, Lord, is translated Rabboni, R-A-B-B-O-N-I. That is translated. If you look at Strong's G, and I don't know what number it is, and Strong's uh, Bible Concordance, uh, and uh, that is Rabboni. Rabboni, uh, and we're familiar with the term rabbi, aren't we? which means master or teacher or um, one whose teachings I follow. Um, but according to David Guzik, um, Rabboni is a strengthened form of rabbi. And it doesn't just mean a master, a chief, a teacher, or a prince. It means my master my Lord, my chief, my prince, my teacher. And so what Bartimaeus does is when he said this, he expressed who, not only who Jesus was, but who Jesus was to him. My man, he made it personal. Doesn't it feel good? How many of you can remember the first time somebody told you to make it personal? And you started singing, Jesus is mine, Jesus is mine, everywhere I go, everywhere. And the youth choir was singing it, and you started singing that thing, oh, Jesus is mine. And then you started singing, mine in the morning, you know, morning, mine in the evening, 
all the day long, singing my song, morning. Yes, ain't telling y'all what I'm saying. Y'all remember that? <laughs> you know what it was. <laughs> this is what it was. But it felt that it, it felt different to say, Jesus is mine, my Jesus, my Savior. My deliverer, my teacher, my Lord, my uh, uh, Rose of Sharon, my Savior. It feels different when you call him your Jesus. Not that you own him, but that you claim him. Feels different, doesn't it? Yesterday, I, uh, um, Deacon Johns has been in the hospital, uh, and at 96, and uh, you realize Deacon Johns is like on his second life. 96 now, and Deacon Johns is in the hospital running things. He said, Reverend, I told him, he said, uh, he said the, the nurses asked me, uh, was I dating anybody? He said, I told him I ain't studying nobody. I ain't messing, I ain't studying y'all. All I'm trying to do is live my life and serve God. Because if you look at Deacon Johns, he looks to be about 60. Does not look 96. And when most 96 year olds and 82 and 83 and 85 and 87 year olds say they get ready to go for a drive, we make sure that our car is not near them. Especially if they backing up. Y'all you ought to be out here on senior day to see that. The seniors come in. Deacon Johns, when Deacon Johns says he's going driving, Deacon Johns at 96 can probably drive better than I can at 52. Deacon Johns is spry and in talking to Deacon Johns. Pastor, get to the point. Okay, I am. Deacon Johns said, it's so good that I can talk to my pastor. And it warmed my heart when he said, not the pastor, he said, my pastor. And you know, sometimes when I go into worship, sometimes the ceiling starts leaking. And I promise you in my office yesterday, the ceiling started leaking a little bit because he claimed me as his pastor. Not that he owns me and I own him, but he claims me and I claim him, amen? My pastor. When, when Bartimaeus uh, called Jesus Rabboni, he put, took Jesus from being an impersonal savior to a personal savior. He took Jesus from the outside of the circle where I look out and sing how great thou art to the inside of the circle where he has knocked on my door and he said if I will answer it he will come in and sup with me and I with him. It, it took Jesus from being uh, uh, um, um, thou uh, father our father which art in heaven Hallowed be thy name. I got to scream because you saw far away to Jesus who was here and personal. And I could talk to him. I could walk with him. I could tell him that he's mine and I am his. It took Jesus to being his personal savior. What's in a name? He called him Rabboni. And I don't have a hoop clothes, but I got a revelation clothes. 52. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Jesus said, You're healed, you go your way, and I'll go mine. Jesus went that way. Bartimaeus then didn't, didn't go this way. Bartimaeus did what? He followed Jesus. And here's my question for you today, for you today, for you today. 
I know Jesus has been a savior to you because you're here. You believe that Jesus hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cross, but you also believe that he rose again with all power in his hand. I know you believe that uh, the word about Jesus, the lineage of Jesus being the, the son of a virgin, born of a virgin, and, and I know you believe that he came down 42 generations and he's related to David by blood, and I know that you believe that he is adopted into the royal family on his father's side. I know that you believe that he is your savior and your Lord and your Christ and your king and your Lord and your king of kings and your rose of Sharon and your risen savior. The question is, is that if you believe all those names and monikers that you call Jesus and when he heals you, do you go your own way or do you will you follow him that's the question and that's not a question for your mouth first of all it's a question for your heart and it's a question for your feet and your actions and your activity following him means I do what he says do and I don't keep qualifying it oh I would do it but this following him means you give him time and you spend time with him and when it's time for Bible study and Sunday school you don't go I got something else to do he didn't have something else to do when he went on the cross at Calvary he didn't have something else to do when you were in your desperate situation you called out like Bartimaeus he might not have come when you wanted him to but he's always on time he came when it was time for him to come and that's the thing if he has done anything for you are you going to go your own way are you going to be like the prodigal son and take your goods and go and part it or are you going to follow Jesus it's time for the church to stop playing church. It's time for us to stop playing. And it's time for us as individuals to stop vetting those individuals we know. Claim one thing and do another. I can't be the only one calling it out. Or I become the liar. And those who sit in silence become the truth. You have to ask your brothers and sisters and your fellow Christians if he's Lord of you, Lord of Lords, a Lord of Lords, if he's the Savior to you, if you believe what the Word says about him, and if mm, you believe that he is Rabboni, your Lord, your Savior, your Master, your Teacher. Is this what it looks like? Follow him? What's in a name? Everything you need is in the name of Jesus. Come on, stand with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word today, God. We thank you that we got a chance to look into the life and the experience of Bartimaeus. Mm. We thank you, Jesus, for being our Savior. We thank you, Jesus, for being the Son of David, meaning the word that was taught and the prophecies were true. And we thank you, Jesus. Mm for being our personal Jesus. Not that we own you, but that we claim you. And we thank you for all that you did for us before or ere we knew you. Uh, and we thank you that all, that all for all that you are doing for us now that we do know you. And Lord, while we pray that our uh, feet will head in your direction and that we will follow you in the way like Bartimaeus did. 
because you did declare Jesus you said I am the way the truth and the life and no man come on the, unto the Father but by me. So God, we pray that we would all get in the way and stay in the way, God. And Lord, for our brothers and sisters who, are, who have one foot in and one foot out, we pray that we would tell them the truth, God, so that they will get in the way too. This is our prayer, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus, at the mention of your name, every knee shall bow and tongue proclaim, Jesus, 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 you are Savior, you are Lord, and you are God. Okay, okay, I got you. Come on, let's go again. Jesus. 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 At the mention of your name. Every knee will bow and tongue proclaim. Jesus. Savior, you are Lord, and you are God. God. Let's do it one more time. Jesus, come on, Jesus. 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 At the mention of your name, every knee shall bow, tongue proclaim, Jesus. You are Savior, you are Lord, and you are God. Now we're going to go to the We Love You. Give me Sopranos. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. I'm singing your We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Yes. We love you, we love you, we love you, we adore you, adore you, adore you, adore you, we praise 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 you, Jesus. At the mention of your name, every knee will bow and tongue proclaim, Jesus, you are Savior, you are Lord, and you are God. Now, if there's one today who does not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, uh, this is the acceptable day. This is the acceptable hour. Tomorrow is not promised. Not even uh, the next hour, the next minute. None of those are promised to us. So God is calling for us to give our hearts to Jesus now. Jesus is calling for you now. Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt shall be saved. And the 10th verse says, with the heart man believeth unto salvation uh, and with the mouth confession is made unto righteousness. And Lord, we pray right now that somebody would come asking, what must I do to be saved? Is there one today? Is there one today who does not have a church home and would like to make Ebenezer Baptist Church your church home? As you see, we are a Bible-teaching, Bible-believing church. 
we believe God's word, we will teach God's word, and anything other than God's word is, uh, is garbage. Let me go ahead and put it out there like that. I'm standing flat for it. It's garbage, it's trash, it is a fraud, it is a, some mess, it's some stuff, and it's hot mess. Anything other than God's word needs to put, be put out with the trash. We teach God's word. We teach Christ and him crucified. If you are looking for a church home, why don't you make Ebenezer Baptist Church your church home? Whether you're here or whether you're virtual. Um, if you're virtual, the information is on the screen below. Our phone number is on the screen, 757-490-9690. And our website, www.ebcvaworship.org. One more uh, piece of business and then we'll close out. Um, if you are watching virtually, and, uh, and if you're here, you want to make Jesus Christ uh, your Lord and Savior, um, will you pray this prayer with us so that uh, you may receive Christ as your King, as your Lord and Savior? Uh, let's pray. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. I have no goodness, have no goodness of, my of my own. I ask for your forgiveness. I, for your forgiveness. I, believe, I believe you died for my sins. For my sins. And, I and I believe you rose from the dead. From the dead. I, turn from I turn from my sins and invite you, and invite you to come into my heart and into my life. I will trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with us, you are now a citizen of heaven. And you say, well, it, was it that easy? Yeah, it was. But here's the hard part. When you prayed that prayer, God put the Holy Spirit in you as a down payment on your heavenly home and what's to come. And that Holy Spirit will pull you toward the word. Not only will it pull you toward the word, if you let it, it'll pull you toward a place where the word is being taught. And, when it, and it'll pull you toward service. You'll feel a need to serve at a greater capacity. And you'll feel, feel a need not to serve by yourself, but to come in with a community of believers to serve. And if so, and when that happens, 965 Baker Road, right here on the corner, right across from Virginia Wesleyan, this is where we want you to come. If you don't come here, go somewhere. But go to a church. Get under a pastor who's teaching the word. Amen? Amen. We want to thank our praise team for coming today. And yes. Uh, we want to thank uh, Dr. Romero and Sister Teresa. <clears throat> We want to thank our, uh, our musicians, Brother McDonald, Trustee Nemo, thank you so much. Uh, we want to thank the AV team for coming. And we thank you for joining us today over Facebook Live. Amen. Did I miss anything? Let's pray. Now may the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us henceforth, now, and forever. And all of God's people said, amen. God bless you. What's in a name? Amen. Thank you. Y'all are amazing.